We love our great Minnesota get together and we love getting to meet you, our fans, our viewers. Well, last week, our team answered some of your questions about our newest members of the team and much more. Take a look. I was wondering, no, uh, about the other new guy named Jonah. Jonah, sure. yes, Jonah is new. He is, uh, he, wh where does Jonah come to us from? Do you know? Jonah came to us, I think, from Charlotte or Raleigh. No, yeah. he, he came from Raleigh. He came from Raleigh, North yep. Carolina. Yep, so he just started. We actually have a bunch of new people. Um, from North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, right. Another person we have, and I'm, I'm, the reason I'm looking around is because she is, I thought I saw her, Pauline Lee. She's with us in the morning. Pauline uh, is from here in Minnesota. So she's now back and she's been a really great part of our morning show. We didn't understand this because, you know, she's from, yes, she is from Minnesota, uh, but has never had a sweet Martha's. It's a crime. It's a crime. It's a crime. Yep. So, oh, oh, okay, okay. I would like you to please explain to the audience this. Uh, yes. I knew you were gonna ask me. I heard my name and I was like, oh no, they're probably talking about it, aren't they? Uh, All right. How many years have you been coming to the Minnesota State Fair? Okay, it's been a while since I've been back. Okay. So I used to go all the time as a kid, but okay. then I moved away for work, so I've been away for more, about a decade. Okay. So I've uh, been back. But what I heard you say is you came as a, as a child. Um, did your parents shield you from the cookies? Do you, are you allergic to chocolate? I, I'm no. just, I'm very confused. No, 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 no. I love cookies. I love chocolate. Yeah. But for some reason, we just never went to the cookies. I don't know. We went to the cheese curds. We went to uh, the fries. We went to the turkey leg. We went to the corn on the cob. Just never the cookies. How did you get started doing the news? Wh who's that for? Oh. Both. Uh, I had a very unusual uh, career switch. I was about uh, 27 years old. My dad died, and my dad had a job he loved, and I had a job I didn't love, and it made me kind of stop and reevaluate my life, and I said, I want to be a okay, TV I'm guy. So I went to all these different colleges and universities, and none of them would let me just kind of uh, sample some journalism classes, and fortunately, I found a place called Columbia College in Chicago, and it was like going to trade school. All my teachers were on television. One was the chief meteorologist at Fox, one was a reporter, one was a producer, and I just immersed myself in that and got some training and got an internship in a small market in the middle of Illinois, and then moved to a little bigger market in the middle of Illinois, and then uh, applied here and got the job. And then the best thing ever happened, I married Amelia and I've been riding her coattails ever since. Smart man. Really super smart. And I, uh, I grew up in Stillwater, so uh, I've been watching Channel 4 since I was knee high and I've wanted to do the weather since I was a little boy. So it's been fun to uh, go to college, fulfill the dream. I did work briefly at Fox down the way. I'm not afraid to say that, but came here. I've been here 16 years now and wouldn't trade it for anything. It's fantastic. Yeah, but Chris, Chris knew what he wanted to do. It took me 10 years to figure out what I wanted to do. He's a little slow. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite part about being on the news? Go. Uh, what, what's my favorite part? Look at Amelia, Frank, Chris, come on. It's, it's, it's like it's the greatest place in the world to go to work every day. And plus, you get, you get I heard this once, and I, I'm quoting somebody in the camera who it was. You get a front row seat to the human condition. So everything that happens, you get, and, and every day, Amelia can talk about this, huh? your jaw just drops because it's like, I can't believe that happened. Yeah. Pretty much what, I mean, the bonus is the people we work with, because that is, we're actually like a family, so we're really, really lucky there. Um, but I think it's being able to tell people's stories. I, those are our favorite type of news stories, being able to share that part, right? I mean, I, I know that's your human interest stories, that even with sports, you do that, that's a, you do some wonderful stories. Yeah, because you see games all the time, right? So they kind of blur together, and everybody runs the same highlights, but when you can do a story, that's different than what everybody else is running. That's when it's fun. Are you a Vikings fan? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so am I a Vikings fan? Yes, I'm a Vikings fan. Um, interesting story about the Vikings. I was working at Famous Dave's when I was a, I think I was a junior in high school. And this was when they went 15 and one. Remember that, when they went 15 and one, Randall Cunningham, the quarterback. And there was this guy who came in, so this is the NFC Championship game, right? 15 and one. Danny Green's the head coach. They should easily stomp all over the Atlanta Falcons, right? We don't need any dirty bird. We don't need any of that, right? There's this Falcons fan who comes in, full regalia. I mean, this guy's decked out. He had the cowboy hat. He had all things on, right? 
And he, he looks at me and he says, you know I'm coming back here when the Falcons win. And I <laughs> laughed it off. I laughed it off. So anyway, the game's going on and I see what's happening. And then the game ends and the Vikings lost. And I remember slowly just walking over to the television. I turned off the television because we had TV set up all over the place. So I walked over and I looked at my boss and I said, I have to leave early now <laughs> because there's a gentleman who's going to be coming back looking specifically for me and I don't want to be here. And I left early. I still have not lived that down and it still haunts me. I mean, that was the team to do it. Uh, so yes, I am a Vikings fan. I got one for Mr. Augustinak. I like watching you on Saturday mornings. Thank I like you. your weather info. And what do you think this winter might be Ooh. like? Oh, good question. Ooh. Yeah. So this is a tricky one. Uh -huh. um, this is going to be a... So the weather pattern for this winter is a lot like last year. It's probably going to end up being a weak La Nina. And those, we know from experience that when we have a weak La Nina here... That tends to be an extreme winter in one way or another. They almost never end up average. The problem is I don't know which extreme it's going to be. Oh. Extreme meaning there have been La Nina winters when it's been extremely warm, and there have been La Nina winters when it's been extremely snowy. Last year was actually one of those warm winters. This year, I would love to say that we're going to... I'm not a big winter weather fan. This is my kind of jam right here. I'd like to say we're going to dodge a bullet this winter and have a repeat of last year, but the truth is I'm not sure, but I, can, I would put money on the fact that it's going to be extreme one way or another. So the promise here is with next weather, uh, we tell you what we know when we know it, and if something changes, we update you. As we get a little bit closer, I think we'll start to get some signals that will allow us to see which direction the odds are tilting to a warmer than average or, or colder and snowier than average. But right now, I'm about as clueless as you are as to which of those two it's going to end up being. Keep watching CBS News Minnesota for continuing coverage.